So um, today I will be showing you a little bit how to make the annotation of your VCF files. Uh, for these analyses, we'll be using the GATK, not the pre-base uh, VCFs. I will show also like to you at the end of this presentation how I fix the, um, the script that you have to get the G GATK results. Um, but um, for now, I, I want to like to show you how we can do the whole annotation so you can start to get your results, okay? So the first thing that I did, I logged in in Cephalos, so I'm in my home directory. So if I just type ls, you'll see that I have many things here, but um, in your case, it will be your stuff, okay? The first thing that I want you like to do is to do like mk dir for make directory, and you just make like a directory such as like snip f uh, analysis, for example, okay? So when you do this, you will have a folder called SNPF analysis inside your home directory. So if you do like CD uh, SNPF analysis, you are inside of it. So if you type LS, you will see that everything will be empty, okay? So I want you to do uh, two things on this uh, folder. The first thing is to create a directory called uh, data and another one, called um, VCFs, okay? So this place like where you have data is where your database will be and the make directory VCFs will be where your inputs or your VCFs from the script that we did will be. So I want you also to do like a, a CD data so you are inside data and you, as you can see, it's empty. So you will also create a new folder called CPAR underline ATCC. Remember that the name that you're putting on this folder, it's the most important thing that you will need in these now. So if you're putting like Ashley ATCC, it's okay, but you need to remember, and I will show you how to do it, you will need to remember how to, um, put exactly the same name in your config file to run SNP path. So when I create that, you will see that I will have like one folder called CPAR ATCC. Let's just go inside this. So now it's really important. And this is exactly the same comment that you will, that you will give if you're inside this folder, such as I am right now. So the first thing that you will need to do is like to do like CP scratch, RPBAP Ashley project test snip f data so such as you see and you see that I have a folder exactly with the same name as I created inside this folder that it shared with you so what you will need to do it's copy like if I type type tab, you will see that there is a GTF file called Jeans GTF and a sequence.fasta and another BIM uh, file. So we, you have like three files there. What I want you like to copy is just the genes and the sequence.fasta to your folder. So to do this, what you need to do, is you just need like to type star GTF. So the file that ends with GTF into the directory that you're currently in, that is in your home directory. So when you do this, I want you to do the same thing for the sequence in FASTA format. So you just change it and you just type that there. So now if I just do a ls, you see that both files are inside this. So doing this, you have already set up what should be your um, data uh, base to be pulled off to perform the analysis. So all the information, where are the genes in the genome will be here. So after you finish this, you can just come back to folders. So you are now like in your SNPF analysis where you have the VCFs and the data. And I also want you like to copy, so same position, so scratch RPBAP, uh, Ashley project 
test. It's, I like this one. It's probably, yeah. So inside Ashley's projects, there is a folder called VCFs. And as you can see, I have bunch grass, INRA, Sterling, and Washington JTK filter VCFs available there. So the only thing that you need to do is just to put a star. So it means like copy everything to VCFs in the SNPF analysis. So when you do this, everything should be there. So if I do a LS or uh, you'll see that there are the two folders are there. And if I do a LS VCFs, you will see that everything will be there. So basically right now, what we are doing, we are just transferring the, all the, uh, files that we will need for these analysis to um, your home directory so you will be able to perform the analysis. After you finish everything of these, we will need to copy um, like what we, uh, what we call the config file to do this. So again, outside the data, so it, it should be like exactly on the SNPF analysis, you will need to uh, copy uh, a file from the raw um, SNP F, uh, like w w the, the, the cre creator, like I mean, when the person installs SNP F in the cluster, there is a config file, a default config file that comes with it. So you need to copy it to add your data uh, base to it. So you will recognize everything that we are building here. So to do this, you just type CP, user local apps and you will put like i if i'm not wrong is it's i think it's eb it's eb snip f and you will see that it's 4.3 the one that we are using and it's snip f config so doing this and pressing like a full stop at the end here this will copy the file to your SNPF analysis. This file, let me just show you like pretty quick. Basically has all the information about the databases that are available for SNPF. Most times, and like the, what, what I mean is there are many databases that will be available and crypto, it's, it's actually inside this. But the problem is that we are using a new version of the genome and a new version of the annotation. So this will not be available on SNPF right now. So to do this, as you will remember, you have in your data, one folder called CPAR ATCC, that is actually your database. What I would suggest you is to copy this. So it can be any name that you want, but it needs to be copied exactly the way it is and you go to nano snipf config. So you're opening everything. And what I want you to do is to scroll down until you find databases and genomes, such as we have here. And you will see that there is the known standard databases. So basically what you will need to do is to create your new database. So to do this, this is just a comment. You just put like the name of the organism that you want. I like to put exactly the strain so I will know what kind of uh, file that I, I'm using. This is version 46. So I will know that if there is a version 47 in the future, I will need to update it. So then the only thing that you need to do after you do this in the lower, you just paste the name of the folder that you have. You put dot genome. So this will just say that I have a genome information and the annotation information inside this folder. And you just comment something like cryptosporidian parvum Iowa ATCC. This it's basically, um, I like, like to put like a dot here, just like to, to be easier. But doing this, this is the only thing that you need to do. You just press Control X and you save it. So now 
nothing changes, but you told the SNP path in the config file that you now have a new database that you want to import to perform everything. How can you um, do, uh, like, how can you load now this information into SNP path? So the first thing that we'll need to do is to call SNP path. To do this is pretty simple. So I just type ML SNP path and 4.3 T Java. And when you do this, you are calling the module for SNP F. So it's called. And different um, SNP F works a little bit different in the, um, the cluster because usually you what you need to do is just to do Java jar SNP F dot jar. And this is how usually we do um, to, to perform all of these. But in the case uh, of um, the SNP path in the cluster, it's a little bit different. So let me just uh, click here just to show you. So the way that the 4.3 works, the way that you call SNP path, it's using this specific thing. So Java dot jar, there is like a dollar, eboot SNP path dash SNP path dot jar. So basically what I used to do, I just go to wikigacrcuga.edu wiki SNP path sepal2 and you will have this. If you just type on Google SNP F space sepal2, you will go to this folder. So what you need to do is just to copy this specific comment here and you go back to the folder that you have. So you just paste this that you just have here. And what you will do now is to build your database. So you put the information, you have the folder with all the information that they need. And remember when I was showing you before that we have the GTF, the FASTA file, and there was a bin file in the data folder. So now we will be creating this bin file. And how can we do this? It's basically um, using the command build from uh, SNPF. So you just do Java minus jar, eboot SNPF dot jar, build. What is the format that you have inside? So we put a GTF22. There is actually the format that we have available there, minus V, and such as we did before the name of the folder that you have. So CPAR ATCC. So when you click here, right now, what the SNP path is doing, it's going inside the config file, looking what, it, what are the databases that you have available. And it's looking for the database that you put on the minus V option. So just like to put here, just like to remember. So it's just going to the minus V CPAR ATCC. So it's looking in the data folder the CPAR underline ATCC information and it's importing the information of where are the genes and how the sequence look like to perform the analysis. Doing this, you are good to go. Your database, it's saved. So what we need to do, you just need like to delete this and now we will run SNPF in the proper way. So how can we do this? Um, it's pretty simple. You just keep the way that it was, you remove the build, and now you put like the CPAR ATCC, that is the name of your database, so there is no flag that you need to put or anything. And for example, if we're doing like VCF, so, and we want like to do like for ERA, for example, so here I I'm saying that run SNP path, get the information from CP, uh, from, from inside the folder VCFs from CP era SNP GATK filter G, uh, TF, uh, VCF and save this with a name that you want it. So, for example, CP era SNP F annotation VCF. So, it means that this will be the annotated version of your VCF file. So, it will be different from what you have. So if I type enter, now what it's doing is going through the VCF file that we have and it's looking for the positions in the genome 
and where the genes are, and it's telling me if it's inside or outside a coding region, okay? So you see it's pretty quick, and if I do like a more, CP Euro VCF. So like in this case, I put like to save in the current directory. So you will see that it will be appearing in the SNPF analysis. So it's not inside VCF, so you will not have a problem. So you will have three files here. So we have the annotated VCF that we generated. There is a, a SNPF genes.txt. So if I do a more, SNPF, genes.txt, these are basically just telling you like um, how many variants you have. So th there's like, this is a tabular format, so you can see like each column has like a, a, a name, and this is just like telling you for each one of the genes that you have for, so here is the exon, on this position here, we have this gene here, there is this, this transcript here, there is a protein coding, and then, there will be like uh, how many uh, variants with uh, high impact, low impact, and moderate impact or modifier impact uh, in, in what you have. And then you have like what kinds that you have. So they have variants uh, for 3' prime UTR, intergenic, if it was a missense uh, variant, all this information will be on these columns here. But this is just like a table format. And also, like as you can see, you have another like SNPF summary HTML that is a web page that it generates that you can actually see uh, most of these informations in uh, a web page. So it opens in your browser and you can see something more um, easier like to, to be looking for. So in our case, this is not uh, what, what you're looking, but if you are wanting like to maintain all this information, what I would suggest is always to, every time that you finish, you just put like the SNP F genes. So in this case, we run for SNP F for CPRINRA. So I will do this. So I will just put like the same name here, but I will add a number, a name that will remind me that I have made this thing for CPU era. So if I do this, so move will change the name. So it will rename the old file SNPF genes text to CP era SNPF genes text. So if I do this and you type it um, LS, you will see that the SNPF genes now, as you can see, has a new name. So I really like to do the same thing for like the summary. So snip F summary. So I always like to start to type exactly the name so it's easier and I can use tab to do this. So doing this, uh, now you're good to go and you have something uh, made. So this is how we perform the run for SNPF. After you have the SNPF done for each one of your samples, what you will do, so let me just clear uh, the, the, like the, file, uh, the screen here so it'll be easier to follow. So if I do a more, CP era SNP, F, annotated gene, okay, and I do just some more here, you will see that there is a lot of gibberish that you cannot read, and then you have actually the information that you want, that it's uh, from here, like chromosome ID, all this information will be here. So notice that every time that you have a header, you have something that looks like a comment with two different, um, pounds starting like everything. So what I would like to do most of the time is to run grep minus V and I will put the pound signal. Okay. And then when you do this and you type more again, you'll see that these things are gone. So it's, it's much easier to work with. First thing that we need to do. So now that we have everything, 
We want just to get information from things that are with good quality. So it means that we need to have the information pass in the info column. So I don't want things that are like falling in some of my uh, filters, such as this one here. So you see that um, every time that I have like SNP cluster here, it means that something uh, was not that proper. And I want just to keep things that are passing through the, our filter. So if you have pass, it means that it's not falling in any filter. So here I have like standard filter. So it means that the depth here was lower than 10. So you see that the depth, it's not matching to what we asked. So we asked about like mapping qualities that were above 10 and depth above 10. So this depth here is six, but the mapping quality is good. But since depth it's not, there is a standard filter here. Okay, so how can we filter them? So by using grep. So first thing, I just want to find things that has passed. So if I do this, and I type enter, so we'll see now, it, I know that is a little bit difficult like right now to see, but every time that I will go like to this column in any one of these, I will see a pass for them. So it means that everything that has not passed the filter, it was gone. So now the number of SNPs that I have here, they are much more, like I'm much more confident that they should be real than like what we had before with the filter, uh, the not filtered ones, okay? So now I want like just to get information from what I actually want from these files. So the first thing that I want is like, let's just make it a little bit more clear. So the first thing that I want to do is like to cut minus F and this will cut columns, just the columns that I want. So the first column that I want is like which chromosome that is column one. So the second one is the position. I really like to keep the position because it's really useful like for like the future. Um, so the position where you found this, then you don't want like to know right now like what is the change because this is actually in the annotation part. So you don't need like to bother with that. The score, you doesn't need like to have this information. The pass, you already filtered, so you don't want it. So if you count, so this is like column two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eighth column, that is this whole thing here, it's actually where we have actually the axon information that we want. So we want to keep column eight uh, for the analysis. Then, uh, of course, here, here is like what, what is the, the information that we have, but since this is GATK and not free base, it means that everything that was maintained here and we are not running like a specific uh, tool called GVCF to keep even like the uncalled SNPs uh, information. So you should have a zero here instead of a one. So the genotype of all my transcripts in the GATK in our case here, it's one. So since this is here, you can keep it if you want, but right now what we really want to know is um, what kind of genes are being affected or not. So just keeping this three columns should be enough for us to see a much cleaner way. So you see that it's still a little bit, like it's cleaner, but it's still hard to see because we have many pipes and semi-columns, uh, lots of information that it's really hard to, to, to follow. But if you go here, so of course, this information here, until here, it was used just to make the filters. So we, you don't need like to have the mapping quality anymore because you already know that it's good. The depth, so as you can see, like 234, it's much higher than 10, so it's great. So if this is the case, you don't need this information, but what you want to have, it's like what kind of variant it is. So it's a missense variant. So it means that it's a non-synonymous mutation. So it can possibly change the amino acid that you have and then change the protein function. 
this is a moderate uh, effect that, that it's showing. And then you have like the exon that you have, but right after you have the name of the gene that you want it. So if we go back here and I just do something called like set for substitute, open quotes, and do this globally. And I put that every time that I have a pipe, such as you see like here, and I change it for a tabular, so it's like the inverted slash T, and I do like more, you'll see that now I'm separating. So every time that I have a, a pipe, I'm transforming this in a tabular uh, space. So right now that I did that, if I just go and cut minus F one and two, that is basically the information that we had before. One, two. And as I was mentioning, the third column, it's with information that you don't want actually to keep it. So number three, it's not something that you want to keep. But number four is the type of the variant that you wanted. So you can keep number four information right after you have the effect. So number five will be kept. Number six is which exon it was, but if you go to number seven is actually the gene that you wanted to, to see. So I will jump six and just put seven. If I do this pipe more, now it's a really, really clean version of how, like which genes we have, they are uh, being affected um, by our analysis. So, Things that we are like really interested to know are uh, what kind of variants we have they are like inside the gene and not intergenic, right? So if you go like in the third column, they are like a, uh, some things such as like upstream or downstream gene variant. So these information are intergenic because they are not inside the coding region. Missense, it's inside a coding region and it's a non-synonymous. And the synonymous mutation is, as I was mentioning to you, is when you have a variant that changes the amino acid, it, it changes the sequence in the nucleotide level, but the amino acid that will be produced will still be the same. So there's a really low impact to the genome. And of course you have the genes here. So the first thing that we want to do is like to remove everything that could be intergenic. So grep minus V and intergenic. So if I put this, uh, I like, if you do this, it means that I can put more information that I want to remove. So every time that I have the name stream, so downstream or upstream gene, this would be not inside a gene. It's a modifier, but it's not impacting that much the, the information that we want to. And another thing that I will remove is the UTR information because UTRs, besides being like really informative because it, most of the promoters are present in the UTR region, the genome that we are working, we do not have that many information about UTRs. So, to perform these analysis will be a little bit tricky, like if we are keeping the UTRs. So when you do this and you type more, so now you see that everything that we have here will be a low or moderate. It's not likely that we, we will find some modifier here because now we have just missense variants, um, things that are like causing frame shifts. So the protein is said to be in one open reading frame. Now it's maybe in two because of these. Uh, we have deletions, insertions, uh, such as I was showing you like in, uh, in the example before. And we have also like the synonymous variants. This should be enough to tell us which genes are being affected, okay? There is an option if you want to remove the synonymous variants since they are low, um, it, it, it is an option to keep them if you want it. But in our case here, I will keep everything because I want like just to make sure that we have everything. 
What I would suggest you is like after you finish everything, so instead of like to put in more right after the UTR is to save this as a table uh, with this information because this will be really useful for you like in the future if you need to. So what I would do is like to do like CP INRA is NIP table, for example. And when you do this, it's saved. So you don't need like to type all these things again to keep it um, working or not. So now that you have this, you notice that you have chromosome one, you have the position, you have uh, what kind of variant you have, the effect that you have in the last column, you have the genes. And again, the same gene can have more than one variant. So you see that this gene here, so these uh, like 36, 100 has a missense variant, three synonymous variants and another missense variant and another synonymous variant. So it has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six variants in the total. And this is pretty normal. But if you just cut the column, so one, two, three, four, five from this table, you will have a lot of redundancy because you will have like six times the same gene appearing. And there are some genes that maybe will have 40 SNPs and this will be a lot of redundancy. So what I would suggest you is just to, after you save this file, just type cat CP era table. So if I, just to show that it's exactly the same thing that we were looking. And then you just cut minus F5, and if you just type more, you will see that you will have just uh, the IDs, but as I was mentioning, some of these IDs will be repeated many times, right? So how can you sort and remove the redundancy from this? So basically, you just add the common sort and unique, and if you do more, now, there will be no duplications anymore. So just to show you like the difference that we will have, if I just cut and I do like a word count, like the number of lines that we have, we have 603 SNPs on this analysis. And after I do the unique and I do a word count, it goes down to 366 SNPs uh, or genes with SNPs uh, in our analysis. So this list of genes that you have here, what I would ask you to do is like to also save with the name CP uh, INRA SNP IDs, okay? Or better, gene IDs, okay? Doing this for each one of them. So now if I do like uh, CP INRA SNP gene IDs, this is just the list of the genes that we have. The only thing that you will need to do is to copy everything that you have here on this list. So of course you can just copy like the, the whole uh, thing like to your computer and, and it will be much easier. You just need like to do a control C, control V. So if you copied it and you go to the web page here, and you just open like a new tab and call Vinny. So when you go here, just take a little bit, yeah. The only thing that you need to do is like to put the name of the um, sample that you have and paste all the 366 that you have here. And you will see that you will do this for uh, bunch grass. And you will also do this for um, sterling. And now so for Washington. Of course, you will have a different data set for each one of them and this will make your the whole thing. So here I was just copying the same thing from CPU in order for everyone, but you should have a, res, a different result for each one of these, okay? After you finish it, you will see everything that you have. What we are looking for, it's 
everything that bunch grass and sterling looks alike, they are different from CP era and Washington. So now I can tell you that CP era and Washington are the most virulent samples that we have. So I really want to know like what we, you will find on this block here for these two and what you will find on this block here for bunch grass and sterling. So these are the genes that are most, I'm mostly interested on, okay? Doing this, you will have like a list of them and I should be back by then for my vacation and you will see uh, and we can discuss everything that we want. Another thing that it's pretty nice about this is that if you want to just to make like nice colors, you can make it. Uh, this is pretty nice like to put in a presentation. Okay, uh, hopefully this will help you to, to see uh, how to perform everything. So as I promised, uh, I want to just show you like what was the main difference uh, in the file like that to fix the, the whole thing. So if I just go back to CD um, scratch RPBAP Ashley project, I type ls, here is the script, like the snip color that you were using to run everything. So the main problem that we had like in yours that it's not working uh, is it's on this tab uh, unified genotyper here. So it's step nine. So you don't need like to change this, but this is not unifying genotyper anymore. This is haplotype color. So let me just fix this. Um, haplotype color. And the problem that we were facing, it's because at the end of this comment, I was generating a GVCF. For some reason, uh, it's not working now, like in the cluster. So to remove it, it's just, if you do this and type control X and type, Yes. So now if you run again the, the pipeline, you should be able to uh, get the GATK results. Okay, just that. If you have any questions, uh, I will have like probably a meeting to you today. So probably we'll be go, going through everything, but it should be enough um, to make you busy like for a couple of days, okay? Uh, you can shoot me uh, an email, I'll be on vacation, but I will be checking my email every uh, night. So if there's something urgent that you need, just let me know, okay? So let me just uh, stop the recording.